When it comes to the growing pains of children, a condition called idiopathic scoliosis, an abnormal curvature of the spine, can cause deformity and even more pain. Some are now opting for a new type of surgery to correct this condition. Vertebral body tethering, or VBT, attaches a cord to the spine to guide growth and is only offered at NUH so far. Now, the hospital says 12 people did the procedure last year, when 30 have done so since 2019. And we have with us spine surgery specialist, Professor Wong Hee Kit from the National University Spine Institute and a young patient who did VBT, Ang Xuan Ni. Welcome to the both of you and thank you for being in the studio with us. Uh, Professor Wong, take us through what VBT is all about. I see that you've brought along with you these spinal models. Right. So vertebral body tethering is a surgical procedure that is uh, used uh, in um, uh, skeletally immature patients who have um, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis uh, when their curves are progressing, getting worse. Mm -hmm. Typically, uh, these patients uh, would um, have uh, failed bracing or are intolerant to bracing. Okay. Yeah. So you brought with you these right. models. Could you mm. perhaps illustrate to us the technicalities or mm -hmm. the procedure mm. of this treatment? Right. So this uh, procedure involves uh, uh, inserting screws mm. into the uh, bone, into the vertebra. Okay. And this is done through a keyhole approach. And uh, as you can see, there are screws here and then through which a cord is placed. Okay. And there's a nut that secured the cord at every position. Mm. So as the person grows, and this is implanted on the convex side, so as the spine lengthens, there is slight limitation of lengthening on the tethered side. Okay. So the spine gradually, as in Swanee's case, gradually growing from, a, starting from a curved position yeah. and then gradually grew and became straight. Okay. Yeah, so there are two key features of this procedure. One is that it harnesses the patient's growth to straighten the spine. And secondly, it preserves mobility. As mm. you can see here, there is movement, mm. forward, backward, sideways movement, as opposed to uh, the more conventional uh, treatment, which is spinal fusion. Spinal fusion, okay. Yes. So this sounds like a minimally invasive treatment that's essentially helping to uh, maintain spine motion, allowing for greater mobility and yes. flexibility, right? right. Um, but is surgery the only option? I, I know you talked about uh, spinal fusion. Can patients seek other forms of treatment? Yes, so um, if our, we usually will start with a brace, okay. right? So if yeah. the brace fails um, in the conventional approach, we would have waited until the patient is more skeletally mature, more grown, mm -hmm. and then we proceed to a fusion. So in this interim period, that's where the gap is for treatments like this uh, to help the patient actually get better before, you know, rather than in the past, allowing the spine to become more curve as the patient grows as, as, uh, and then go on to a fusion. That's still a good procedure, spinal fusion. I'm not saying it's not, but yeah. um, here we have a, an opportunity to actually make use of the patient's growth to straighten the spine and to preserve mobility at the same time. What if surgery is not an option? Mm. Well, I think that um, the, if surgery is not an option, then I think that we will just have to worry about having a patient having a large curve mm. and with uh, significant functional effects later in life. So yeah. physiotherapy as well can help yeah. to a certain extent. Yes, only okay. in small curves. I think physiotherapy may help okay. in small curves that mm -hmm. are not usually in the surgical range. Okay. But once the curve becomes large, uh, that treatment may not be the may not be effective. I see. Yes. Okay, Shreni, let's get your view on VBT. I mean, you are a patient, you went through the surgery, you were sharing with us earlier, like uh, the surgery, I think, took place four to five years ago, right? Um, share with us, what was it like to have the cord attached to your spine? Um, I think, right, actually, I was qu quite scared before when I, need, when I knew I had to go for the surgery. But because the brace didn't really help, right? So, like, I had no choice but to like, go for it. Yeah. But actually, the process was actually quite smooth. 
Okay. Yeah, I managed to go back to school after a week after the surgery. Oh, that's great. And how long was the surgery? Um, I don't really... If you can remember or recall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember, but I remember I stayed in the hospital for about four days. I see. Okay. And, and how do you feel now? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel like you can exercise better or carry out your daily activities better? Uh, for about eight months after the surgery, I was exempted from B, B lessons and I couldn't do exercises or sports. But actually after that, I could do any like normal physical activities like any normal person. Okay, that, that's great to know. Um, are there constraints though that you had to, you know, that you have to bear in mind anything that you were not supposed to do during that time of recovery? Um, not much, but I remember I was advised not to carry heavy things. Okay, okay. Uh, Professor Wong, you know, VBT is basically an early intervention option for adolescents like, you know, Shweni or young people like Shweni whose bones have not yet fully matured, right? So what are the criteria for a candidate to be suitable for a VBT or when is he or she not suitable uh, for this treatment? Right, so um, I, I would say uh, uh, the... The ideal uh, sort of indication for surgery would mm. be someone who is skeletally immature, mm -hmm. still have enough growth left to power the correction. Okay. And there are indices um, on x-rays that we can make use of, like the uh, pelvic uh, ossification, the bony cap over the pelvis, and also hand x-rays that will uh, allow us to stage the patient's uh, development and apply the appropriate uh, uh, sort of uh, the tether, uh, rather the appropriate force on the tether. Okay. Uh, when I say force, is that for patients who are more mature, who may not have a lot of power to straighten the spine, we actually put more compression or put the screws nearer and mm -hmm. tension the cord so that we can get more correction right from the beginning and depend less on the, on the patient's growth to uh, straighten the spine. Okay. Well, who, what? Who are the patients who are not suitable? I would say very young children, generally less than 10 years old, because they have a lot more growth and they can, they can grow and over straighten the spine. Mm. Can you imagine the curve going in the opposite direction? Yeah. So for those patients, uh, we might have other, either other forms of treatment or wait until or they're slightly older. start with bracing as well. So, yes, and mm. then uh, do that. Okay, I think we have time for one final question. Uh, Shweni, would you recommend this treatment to others who are probably struggling with, you know, curved spine problem? What's your advice to them if, you know, they are unsure about undergoing this surgery? Yes, I think they should go for this opportunity because I wore the brace for about six months and it was actually quite uncomfortable and it's very inconvenient to take on and off all the time. But after the surgery, it's actually, it actually helped me and I can just like do any normal activities like everyone. So I think I would recommend. It's really reassuring to know that VBT is just one of the many available treatments to help ensure that, you know, these young patients, uh, you know, they, they have a chance of having a better quality life ahead of them, right? Yes. Professor Wong, thank you so much. Shweni, thank you so much for thank coming you. to the studio to speak with us. That was Professor Wong Hee Kit from NUH and his patient, Ang Shwen.